I got a call to remove a colony of bees from this camper trailer, and here's how I did it. The owner said that the bees had been there for a few weeks, and although the bees were not bothering anyone, the owners wanted to remove and relocate the bees for everyone's safety. I went inside and I found this nice note from the owners letting me know that the bees were under the sink cabinet in the bathroom. The most exciting part of any bee removal is seeing the hive for the first time. So I went inside the bathroom of the camper, I opened the sink cabinet, and there it was, a beautiful hive with maybe 15 to 20,000 bees. The hive was about the size of a basketball with seven or eight perfectly shaped combs, and the bees were actively working to build more comb. The bees were very docile, and they didn't even seem to mind as I sat and observed their behavior. So I got to work removing the hive. The first thing I did was I gave the bees just a little bit of smoke to move them out of the way so that I could easily grab the comb without hurting any bees. You can see how the bees scurried away from the first few combs where I aimed my smoker. You can think of the bees moving away from the smoke here, the same way that you would move away from smoke wafting in your direction if you were standing around a campfire. As I removed the first piece of comb from the hive, I took a moment to look for the queen and to examine the comb. The queen was not on this piece of comb, but there were a lot of great resources that the bees would need later on. So I grabbed a wooden frame from my temporary travel hive. I carefully put the piece of comb into the wooden frame. I used rubber bands to secure the comb to the frame. The bees would actually chew through these rubber bands later on and drag them out of the hive after they've attached the comb to the frame. And I got really lucky here. This comb was almost the exact height of a large size frame that beekeepers refer to as a deep frame. It fit almost perfectly, which made my job much easier. I moved on to the next piece of comb, working carefully and slowly as I used my hive tool to detach the comb from the cabinet ceiling. Since the bees had not been here for very long, the beeswax was new and fresh, which made it very soft and difficult to work with. I had to be extra careful while handling the comb so that it didn't collapse on itself from the weight of everything it was holding, which is why that piece fell in the background. You can see here that this piece of comb had a ton of bees on it, but it also had eggs, larvae, brood, nectar, and pollen. I didn't see the queen on this piece of comb either, but it was still a very important part of the hive. I grabbed the same wooden frame I used for the first piece of comb from the temporary travel hive. Once again, the comb fit almost perfectly into the frame, so I didn't need to trim any excess off to get it to fit into the frame of the new hive. My goal for every bee removal is to remove and relocate the hive as close as possible to the way I found it. You might see me shake bees off of my hand from time to time here, but these bees were not stinging me and they were very gentle. I slid the rubber bands around the second piece of comb and since I didn't have room to put another piece of comb, this frame was ready to go back into the temporary travel hive. The idea is that if you get enough resources from the original hive, enough bees, and of course the queen, the bees will start to recognize this temporary box as their new home and they'll go right in. I continued to work my way through the hive, giving the bees as little smoke as they and I needed. I kept my smoker tilted up against an open window in the bathroom so that the bathroom in the whole camper wouldn't fill up with smoke. One of the most challenging things about this removal was working in the small space of the camper's bathroom. I didn't want the bees to fly all over the camper, so I worked the entire time in the bathroom with the door closed behind me. I could barely stand up and turn around, holding the temporary travel hive that I was putting the bees in. I do want to give some extra special thanks to the owners of the camper trailer. They left the AC and the electricity and the water in the camper on for me. All of these things are extreme luxuries in my line of work and they made a huge difference here. I was able to wash my hands when they were sticky, recharge the lights I was using to illuminate the cabinet under the sink, and most importantly, stay cool in the Texas heat. I put this piece of comb into the frame just like I had done the ones before it. I still hadn't found the queen yet, but I wasn't too worried. 
I saw a bunch of bees clustering in the back corner of the cabinet, so I thought it was likely that the queen was back there and I just hadn't found her yet. I often find the queen at the end of bee removals. She likes to stay hidden in with the safety of the colony. Here you can see the cluster of bees in the corner of the cabinet where I thought the queen was. After I put this piece of comb into the temporary travel hive with the others, I took a second to look for her. I still didn't see the queen, so I kept working to get the last few pieces of comb out. Again, I gave the bees just a little bit of smoke so that I could clear them out of the way so that I could safely reach into the hive and grab the comb without hurting any bees. My smoker here was full of burlap recycled from bags of coffee beans with some pine needles on top. I like to use natural materials that are either found or recycled. One of the ways that bees communicate is through scent, by sending each other signals through pheromones. Another main reason that beekeepers use smoke is to mask those alarm pheromones that the bees send out to the colony to let them know that their colony might be in trouble and that they need to defend themselves. There's no magic smoke that prevents a beekeeper from getting stung. Especially during a bee removal, I try to use smoke sparingly. I want the bees to be able to communicate to each other and to be able to pass messages along to all the bees in the colony. They need to be able to tell each other where their queen is and where their new hive is. With every piece of comb I removed, I took some time to look for the queen and observe the bees' behavior. They remained calm, they remained gentle, and although I knew I didn't have the queen yet, there were a lot of great resources in this hive that would serve the bees later on. This was a very healthy colony, the bees had a good temperament, and I was hoping that they had a good, strong queen. I grabbed a frame from my temporary travel hive to put this next piece of comb in. I like to remove the comb and put it in the new hive in the same orientation and order that I found it in. Once again, this piece of comb fit beautifully into the frame with ease. You can see here that I like to start with my rubber bands on the sides of the frame, put the comb into the frame, and then slide the rubber bands along the outside of the comb. I always try to keep the comb as preserved and as intact as possible just like the bees made it. The female worker bees have worked very hard to build the comb and to fill it with everything the colony needs to survive. Here's a close-up of the comb where you can see some yellow pollen at the top and some dark brown brood cappings with baby bees in the middle. I kept removing the comb of the hive while searching for the queen. If you look closely in the background, you can see some of the bees starting to fly and crawl away from both the sink cabinet area and away from the temporary hive that I had resting in the shower of the camper. This was another behavioral sign from the bees telling me that I had not yet found the queen. I continued to focus on removing the comb and getting as many resources as possible into the new hive. These bees were still very gentle and they were not stinging me. I've done countless bee removals and I've worked with bees for almost 10 years, so I've learned how to read their behavior and how to properly handle bees. In addition to all the bees starting to fly around the bathroom, you can see a ton of bees still clustering in the corner of the sink cabinet where I thought the queen would be located. As I knew I was nearing the end of the hive, after I got these pieces of comb into the temporary travel hive, I was going to spend some time removing bees and looking for the queen in the corner of the cabinet. With just a small amount of comb left, but still a ton of bees to get into the new hive, I decided to start scooping bees out of the sink cabinet with my hands. For me, using my hands is just an easy way for me to get bees out of odd places like this. They also have very hard exoskeletons, so shaking them off and into the new hive does not harm them. After I scooped my first handful of bees out of the cabinet area, I looked around for the queen and suddenly I spotted her. There she was, surrounded by her attendant bees on the wall of the cabinet. This circle of bees is often another clue that helps me find the queen during a removal, since the queen is the only bee in the colony that gets such special care and attention from the other bees. I put the queen in a queen clip where she'll stay for a few days as the bees get adjusted to their new home. 
The slots in the clip are large enough for the worker bees to pass through so that they can easily tend to the queen, but the slots are small enough to keep the queen inside since she is the largest bee in the colony. As soon as I put the queen in the new hive, some of the other bees started to gather around her. But as is common with removals like this, a lot of bees were starting to go towards the sunlight and gather on the window of the bathroom. This actually made my job a bit easier since I could just scoop the bees up with my hands and put them in the new hive. Once they were in the new hive, they would stay there and start to signal to all the other bees to follow them into their new home. Here's what it looked like in the bathroom of the camper trailer full of bees. These bees continued to be very gentle and they were not stinging me as I scooped them off of the window and into their new hive with their queen. After I had removed most of the bees from the bathroom, I checked the outside of the camper and I found a bunch of bees clustered around the area that they were using as an entrance to the sink cabinet where they built their hive. So once again, I just started to scoop them up and put them into their new hive. I had already sealed this entrance from the inside so the bees could no longer enter the camper here. These bees wanted to be with their colony and inside of their hive, but they just didn't know where that was anymore. The more bees that I'm able to get into the new hive, the easier it is for all of the straggler bees to find their way to their new home. I work very hard to collect as many bees as I can, but any professional bee remover will tell you that it's impossible to get every single bee during a removal. Any bees that are left behind after the removal process can be accepted into a new colony nearby, especially if they come to that colony bearing gifts of pollen or nectar. I waited for as many bees as possible to get into the new hive. Then I closed up the hive, I carefully picked it up, and I loaded it into my truck, and it was another great day of saving the bees.